Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video to have a look at some new stuff from CUAV. Now this is their latest Pixhawk flight controller. This is the V6X. I thought I'd take the opportunity while kind of giving a quick overview of what this thing looks like, is also talk to a question that I get a lot, which is why would I use Pixhawk over something else? Now Pixhawk refers to the hardware and this is something that seems to confuse a lot of individuals. Mission Planner, Ardu Pilot, uh, Q Ground Control, PX4, those are kind of the software things. Pixhawk is the hardware flight controller that runs it. Now Ardu Pilot traditionally used to run on very specific hardware. Back in the day it was something called an APM, that's a very old 8-bit flight controller that we're using a long, long time ago. And then it became the Pixhawk family that moved on to 32-bit flight controllers and there was the official Pixhawks from 3DR and I could never afford those. I would get a lot of the clone Pixhawks from places like eBay and Banggood and others but now there are lots of very very good professional grade I would say Pixhawk flight control systems. So this will run in a plane, in a quad. It will also is a great platform for things like quad plane where you have VTOL systems, cars, boats, subs, you name it. Ardu Pilot is a big family of software and this is at the heart of a lot of it. Now you do not need a flight controller like this to run something like Ardu Pilot. However, I would recommend if you are getting into bigger, more expensive models, that this is something that you consider. Now, modern Pixhawk flight controllers like this offer some pretty cool stuff. They're usually H7 processors, so very fast, very powerful processors, and they also have things like redundant IMUs. They also have things like redundant barometers. So they have more than just one lot of everything, which can help if things start reading a little bit wacky. They also have things like CAN bus support. CAN bus is not new, it runs around lots of automobiles these days, and lots of cars, so it's a very, very robust system and it allows you to dramatically reduce the amount of cables and wires running around your UAV. It even has things inside like a little heating element. So the actual flight controller itself is inside this little silver box and this is the carrier board. The carrier board is the one with all the connections on in here, there's even a little heating unit. Why is that important? Well, you get something called temperature drift. So the IMU might, or the gyro, if you want to think about like the gyro accelerometer, might think that the board is sat perfectly level. However, as the electronics warm up, then that changes the resistance. And then that might mean that actually the board now thinks it's in a slightly different orientation. Being able to have a heated element inside means that the temperature inside the flight controller can stay constant. And that kind of stuff just isn't available on things like Maytech and Omnibus flight controllers and all those other things that you can put RD Pilot on. There is also a lot of very high-end peripherals that go along with these kind of flight controllers. So for example, I haven't got one here, but this is the airspeed sensor that CUAV have just brought out. And it actually not only has all the support that you'd expect, but it even has a heater inside to avoid icing. So this isn't building a cheap and cheerful 600 millimeter or 900 millimeter wing for throwing at the field. Professional pilots who are building professional UAV systems kind of trust the Pixhawk standards. And again, there's lots of different manufacturers that make this. This just happens to be the latest one from CUAV. Now, coupled with the power of Ardu Pilot or PX4 software, these Pixhawk flight controllers can give the most solid, reliable flight experience. I've not flown anything here that works as well on planes or multi-rotors as a well-set-up Ardu Pilot setup on something like a Pixhawk. But do you need a Pixhawk for your Ardu Pilot PX4 build? Possibly not, but all the professional UAV builders, as I've said, 
I don't know any of them that use anything else. They are a little bit more expensive than a Matek wing flight controller setup. I've done one uh, series on the channel already where I set up RD Pilot on a Matek wing and an omnibus, so that's absolutely an option. But when the model you're building is going to carry a $2,000 camera, most of the pilots that I know reach for a Pixhawk. So the headlines for this new V6X from CUAV are this one has that H7 double precision floating point arithmetic unit and Cortex M3 processor, basically a lot of horsepower in the CPU, has independent bus and power supplies, three redundant IMUs, it also has the IMU temperature factory pre-calibration technology, dual redundant barometer design and 16 PWM servo outputs. And the power outputs on most of the ports are limited to about one and a half amps. So that means there's an awful lot of horsepower in here, but there's an awful lot of options for pinouts as well. And in very large models where you may have geared doors, you may have systems to descend a camera for mapping and things like that, you have loads and loads of options in here to plug everything in and power it. Again, when you're using this in bigger models, I wouldn't power it all directly from the Pixhawk. I'd probably use a nice chunky auxiliary power supply, something like a 10 amp battery eliminator circuit for things like all your servos. The other part of the technology I've got here is this GPS. Now this is their new Neo 3 GPS. The headlines here are it supports the Bedu, I'm not sure if that's how you say it right, Galileo and GLONASS as well as American GPS satellites. It has a compass in here, uh, obviously flight controller status light, a buzzer and a safety switch is all in one here. The really nice thing about this is the cold start for this is rated only 23 seconds. So even if you haven't flown the model for ages, you're not waiting for six, seven, eight minutes for it to do a lock. It should be locked well under 30 seconds. And the Neo 3 is plug and play into the flight controller without any parameter settings. It should just work straight out the box with the hardware definitions as they are. So I thought while I had this stuff in, I thought I'd make a quick video, show you what this latest stuff from CUAV looks like. Again, links down below, but hopefully it's a little bit more obvious uh, why you would maybe choose something like this Pickhawk system or one of the others that are available over uh, something like a Matek or an Omnibus. A lot of it is down to the high-end processor, the redundant IMUs, the redundant barometers, and things like the heating on here as well. And with modern Ardu Pilot, there has been a lot of changes and support to add things into this kind of platform. So support for CRSF, support for things like DJI, OSD technology, all that stuff is now available too. So I might do a new updated Pixhawk series in early 2023, just to kind of show you what the latest and greatest of everything is. But these are pretty easy to set up now. And with the improvements in Mission Planner, thanks to all the developers who maintain that software and the code that runs on this, uh, it can be a relatively easy, fun build, and it's pretty plug and play. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.